You're listening to the Traffic Handler Podcast. We're about getting new customers, making more sales, and growing your e-commerce retail business. I'm your host, Amy Biddle. My guest today is Tom Antion of ScrewTheCommute.com. Just like it sounds like, Tom's got all the answers for how to get rid of the nine to five and make your own, you know, make your own nut. I mean, he's got so many different ideas and connections and connecting the dots to make it possible for anyone to make a living online. If you're willing to do just some work and make some connections. Um, We had a phenomenal talk. I really would encourage you to check out Tom's website at screwthecommute.com. He has a podcast. Um, He's connected a bunch of different ways. But um, here's why you should listen to Tom. He's a multi-millionaire um, many times over. Uh, I guess that was redundant, but he's a multi-millionaire based on his um, uh, online businesses. Um, I, I was really excited to connect with Tom. Uh, he's been a, a friend of a friend for quite some time, and it was really a coup to get him to come on the show. So enjoy today's episode. My guest today is Tom Antian of ScrewTheCommute.com, and this guy is brilliant. Um, quite a score having Tom here with us today. Uh, you know, he's he's kind of a whale, so I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to have this conversation. Tom, welcome. Well, thanks a lot. You know, uh, for uh, a lot of the, the younger people that interview me, like yourself, were calling me the OG. <laughs> and, and you know i'm so far over the hill i don't remember going up the hill all right i've been around a long time and i was yeah. like man i mean I, i'm easy going but you know calling me the old guy that's not really that nice they said no no it's the original gangster what's wrong with you <laughs> you got to get up with the uh, modern terminology so right. so uh, so glad to be here yeah amy yeah, it's exciting. So before we started recording, we were we were starting a conversation, and I'd like to just pick up there, um, talking about numbers and selling, and <clears throat> you've got the human side. So <laughs> let's let's go in the direction that you were going before. Well, uh, I know that a lot of your folks are uh, you know into physical products and Shopify and all that stuff. Yes, and uh, I love people that sell physical products because I buy enormous amounts of physical products. But do I uh, train any of my new students with physical products? Absolutely not. <laughs> and I'll tell you, tell you why. Because I read your book. I uh, forget the, what's the name of it. The uh, oh, the growth, growth guide, the retail growth, growth, guide. growth yeah. guide. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're you're very good with numbers. All the stuff you need to be to be precise and make proper decisions and all that stuff. But what I'm afraid of is that it scares off people that aren't numbers people. <laughs> because, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, uh, and I know how to do all this stuff. Sold millions of dollars of physical products clear back before you were born. I was selling cassette tapes and you know, all this stuff. So, so yeah, I love physical products and made a lot of money doing it. But over, let's see, 22 and a half years ago, I started selling digital products. The first thing was a PDF. Uh, ebook it was basically it was all it was a pdf file and i found that hey all the mistakes that i made when i was selling physical products i could have made the same mistakes and been more profitable because it's 97 percent gross profit in these kind of products and they're just selling electrons and you have no returns no going to the post office every day all this stuff even if you're drop shipping uh when you're drop shipping um, you have you have to worry about the quality of the shipper. Yes, yes, hurting your reputation Correct. because the per the the people gave you the money. They didn't give some far off thing you know that they don't even know about money. Right? Right. So if something right. goes wrong, who's going to hear about it? You are. So I really don't like giving up that much control to a lot of different uh, different people. Okay. Um, so, so with that being said, yeah, if you're making money doing it, keep doing it. But I'm going to implore you to add a digital uh, part to your business because there's even brick and mortar stores that are becoming, uh, staying in business or becoming more profitable, adding a digital thing, even the, an ice cream store, an ice cream store would think, okay, we've got a five to seven mile, you know, service area. Yeah. 
you have a service area around the world. If you made an ebook or an online course on making ice cream cakes, yes. something like that. See, and you, and, and another thing I'm known for, I've done a lot of speeches. I've done like 3000 speeches in 12 countries. Nice. And I start them out with, I want you to work, get paid, 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 and paid forever. <laughs> okay. That's it. That's yeah. My work model. And so when you create something, a piece of intellectual property that's yours, now you can use affiliate stuff too, and the profit margins are still pretty darn good. Yes. But if you have your own intellectual property, mostly how-to products, I'm not talking fiction and uh, things like that, mm -hmm. um, you, you can work on it and finish it and boom, it sells over and over and over and over again. I, and uh, Amy, I have one ebook that i wrote in a four-hour layover in mccarran airport oh. in las vegas yes and as of this morning it brought in 3.68 million dollars <laughs> oh and you i'm said, doing something that? wrong how like, did you do that well you know it, it sounds like bs i get it and uh, it's it's one of the things that i i claim when i do a lot of big media interviews that i couldn't stop the money coming into my checking account if i tried yeah. And it's based on what we call a residual affiliate program. Right. Now, a lot of your people already know what affiliate programs are. You know, yes. basically you refer something, get a commission. Mm -hmm. But uh, residual me uh, affiliate means you refer it once, but you keep getting paid over and over and over as long as that person keeps using the service or is in the membership site or whatever their the thing is. So, mm -hmm. so I wrote a free ebook teaching you how to do something. But you can't do something, you can't do this something and all the benefits associated with it unless you purchase or lease or the, the tool, which is an affiliate thing. And yes. so I've had some people using the service for 18 years and That's I keep phenomenal. getting paid. <laughs> That's see? phenomenal. So, I mean, I could have retired. I hit multimillionaire status around the year 2000. I could have retired 22 years ago, but I'm just a crazy fanatic. So I love this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I would do if I didn't do this, but, uh, but that it, when you add those th things up, uh, number one, I call them an insurance policy for when life gets in the way, yes. uh, you know, things happen, people get sick. I got, I got in a hunting accident, Amy. Oh, and it would be such a great story had I gotten shot, but no, I fell on a log <laughs> for right in my intestines. Yeah. intensive care for two weeks couldn't lift oh. more than five pounds for six months oh. big hole in my stomach and um money that's, kept coming in you know that's amazing all these uh, residual affiliate programs and what we call virtual real estate vre yes. is the actual thing for it is websites where yeah. you don't have to kiss butt on a banker to get a mortgage to put up a world-class website for 150 bucks and, you know, I know people like the Shopify and all this crazy stuff you see on TV, Wix and all these stupid things. I yeah. Well, sidebar here. If mm -hmm. you see something for um, advertised on national TV, every national big things, yep, you can be guaranteed it's aimed towards people that don't know anybody. That's a true story. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, go those daddy. Jeff Bridges promotions, <laughs> yeah. beautiful square space, you know, yeah, ad exactly. that's not so, for technicians. So you can, I mean, there's the gold standard is WordPress, which is free with a, a, a responsive theme. Of course, responsive means it looks good on cell phones and tablets. Yep. 150 bucks at the most for mm -hmm. world class. Go to Fiverr and get some ch uh, custom graphics for almost nothing. Yep. And then uh, you have a world class website that you can promote things on, uh, that you get all the money. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I think you have a web uh, a WordPress, uh, WordPress course, right? Yeah, yeah, I have an yeah. inexpensive WordPress course. It's like 97 bucks or something. But oh. but the thing is, is uh, we have 80 year old ladies making websites that are, you wouldn't know, world-class. We had this one lady, she was called the cheerleader for the senior year. She was like 80 some years old. She had a big pom-poms and was jumping around. Awesome. <laughs> so so uh, you can learn how to do this. And and like I said, I'm not telling you to quit what you're doing if it's profitable. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. just saying there's other things that are more profitable that you can now add if you do have some online experience with your yes. Shopify or whatever you're doing. So, right. so uh, so uh, adding digital products, and it's not just eBooks because, uh, you know, I've written 25 books, but books are the least profitable 
most mm -hmm. hassle things you'll do. Yes. The book should always lead to something bigger. And yeah. so, for instance, that book I wrote in four hours led to $3.8 million, almost $3.9 million in sales so far, and anywhere from five to $15,000 a month on in perpetuity. So, yes. so, so these are the things you want to do so that you can back off if you feel like it. Now, me, I hit the, as soon as something works, I hit the pedal and go further because that's my nature. But you way. can, yeah, you can do um, a lot, um, a lot more of the things you want to do. For as soon as I get done here, you know what I'm doing? I'm taking an axle down to the trailer shop that I'm building a homemade trailer to go into the woods to save some trees. All nice. right. So, do I need to do this? No, but I grew up uh, very frugal and uh, blue collar. And I like to work with stuff rather than just sit in front of the computer all day. So yes, do both uh, the computer allows me to do all this other stuff. That's right. Well, uh, that's, that's phenomenal. You know, uh, it was about, I don't know, 18, 23 months ago, you ever take, and I was having this conversation in my Facebook group with people about, hey, you're selling all of these physical products. Why don't you add a digital product? Because everybody should have digital products. I'm, I'm a huge fan of, you know, X, you know, ones and zeros because, you know, mm -hmm. the margins are so good. And, um, you know, so one of the people in my group, um, she was selling dog toys and you know they were special they were you know a special kind of rubber eco-friendly real real high quality um and she ended up adding um an ebook it was an ebook in her case because that's what we had talked about and she got some other people to contribute chapters and um after that was going i think her average order value went up by like 624 percent mm -hmm. overnight because boom there's all these ones and zeros to Added the bottom line. Well, and I'm not sure what she wrote about, but I mean, you could uh, easily use a copywriting technique called the the um, scare tactics. And it, it sounds mean, but uh, to scare tactic to me. Works with dogs. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. a scare tactic to me is uh, I want you to know the consequences of not knowing what I know or having the product that I'm selling. See? Yes. So with dogs, I mean, I got uh, I have a protection dog company on the side. Yes. Uh, and this is one of the things we might talk about later about making your hobbies tax deductible. But anyway, it's a $50,000 dog. And uh, I don't want him to chew one of these piece of crap, uh, you know, super cheap things because he can munch, he can break your bones with one bite. I mean, so he's going to swallow some and then I'm going to have a $3,000 operation, you know? Right. <laughs> so, yes. so, you know, you got to tell him about how cheap toys can hurt the dogs. And then uh, I don't know what, maybe she did that, but I'm just, that's what I would do. Yeah. <laughs> she, she had, there was an element of that. She mm -hmm. had uh, partnered with a veterinarian and there were, there was some of that in there and it was real rudimentary, but it was based on something that I did 20 years ago. And I had my first website and um, I reached out to a bunch of different people. I said, Hey, to these other nine people, if each of you contribute a chapter we'll have a 10 chapter book that we can all benefit from. And everybody put in a chapter, the, you know, traffic to my website went through the roof. Mm -hmm. after that. It was, it was great. Um, now, uh, I, have a, I have another method in case oh, cool. people don't yeah. have a bunch that. of people to talk to, to yes. ask them to contribute to their book. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'll tell you the story behind this. I was uh, flying first class from LA to Charlotte. I had just done a speaking engagement and I'm sitting next to a guy I looked to be in about his forties next to me, yep. but in the seat pocket in front of him, he's got all these go-kart magazines. Mm. And I'm thinking he's kind of old for go-karts, but uh, I said, Hey, what's with the go-kart stuff? And, he's, and he like lit up. He's like, Oh man, me and my kids, I got three boys. We, we race them. And I said, well, how much does one cost? And he said, Oh, you can't get a piece of junk for 10 grand. I'm like, go kart for 10 grand. And he says, ours, ours cost about $30,000 a piece. And I'm, th and now my wheels are spinning. I'm thinking, okay, he's got three boys and himself. He's got four go karts, 30,000 bucks a piece. Right. If he races, he's probably got extra tires and engines and a giant trailer to haul it in and a monster truck to pull it. Mm -hmm. He's got hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up in these go karts. I had no idea there was such a market. Yeah. So I was thinking to myself, if I wanted to write a book on, how to buy your first racing go-kart. And remember, I have no knowledge at all about go-karts at mm -hmm. all. You would go to a forum or sometimes called a discussion board. 
yeah. which are available on any topic on earth. And I used to tease, yeah, they even have them on pig farm, you know, pig farming. Yeah. And so, you know, I thought, you know, I've been saying that I should, I should check it out. There's a right. forum for pig farming in the UK. <laughs> so, I, I'm not surprised. To hear. Yeah. 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 So, um, and basically what you're doing is you're the publisher. So I would go to the forum and lurk. Lurk means you don't, you know, start advertising yourself and become a, a nuisance out of nowhere. You, you, you lurk and you see what the nature of the group is. Mm -hmm. But on the side of the discussion boards, they usually have the nicknames of the people making comments mm -hmm. and how many comments they made. And sometimes they have senior member if you've made so many comments and get up votes and all that. So I would go to those people and I'd say, hey, I want to write, I'm writing a book on my, how to buy your first racing go-kart. Would you mind if I interviewed you? Yes. How many people you think would turn you down? Oh, most of them are going to be like, yeah, how yeah, long they, That's all they do all day is talk about go-karts. So, and uh, how many people do you think would uh, help you sell it and promote it when, uh, when it came out? Yeah, because they're in it. They're they in it. They're all it's more than just their them. mom. Yeah. Now, the big question is who gets all the money? Oh, yeah, the author, the writer of the book. You do. You That's do. Right. <laughs> they yeah. don't charge you for these interviews. And, no. And so you had no idea about this topic, and you just produced a high-quality book, yes. uh, interview book from a bunch of experts on uh, racing go-karts. So, uh, so go ahead. Well, I got a question for you about yeah. that, because do you worry about any of these people figuring out that you're making bank? And they're they're like, oh, no, you know, I tell them up front, I'm writing a book that I'm going to mm -hmm. sell for how to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so right there, people, authors have a credibility automatically to the most yes. general public. Yes. And I, you're going to include me in your book. They know you're going to sell the book. Right? OK, all right. As long as it's not a thing. No, if you yeah. felt like, see, you're analytical. See, that's yeah. why I, yeah, that's I think too much. It's my downfall. Right. right. Yeah. But uh, uh, if you have really. I mean, the, the lawyer would tell you to get a model re or a release from them, you know, for their information. And you could, you know, there's, you could go to online and just put in release, you know, form yeah. and uh, do a, 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 a stock form on it. But anyway, I never have. <laughs> and uh, and uh, like I said, most people are just thrilled to death that they're, they're in the book. And then, so, so they don't care. So anyway, that's, uh, that's how you can uh, create uh, high quality stuff out of nothing. I mean, that's I have a whole cool. program on creating quality products out of nothing. That's great. I love that. I love that. So let's say somebody owns a store and they're selling, I don't know, commodity product, clothing. Okay. Um, they have to find a way to differentiate because in 2022, this is August of 2022 that we're recording this. And there are 8 bazillion of every kind of clothing you could think of. So you want to differentiate. So what are some ideas like this one, you know, where you could make a book and that could be part mm -hmm. of your differentiator? Yeah, well, basically you show people, you teach people how to mix and match the stuff that you sell. Mm -hmm. you know, so you buy this one thing, it could turn into three or four outfits. Yes. That kind of stuff. I had one girl, unfortunately she's uh, she passed away, but I was helping her. We were calling her the... Uh, thrift store savage that was a, the nickname cool. i came up with her thrift store nice. savage because she's always dressed really cute but i knew she didn't make much money i said how are you dressing so cute all the time mm -hmm. and she lit up like oh man i go to all the thrift stores and i can put these you know, this whole she's she, she was bragging she's yeah. looked cute as a button right out of new york city and she said i got eight dollars in this outfit wow. <laughs> so i came Great. up with the idea for her to do uh not only um, uh, in her case, we were going to do bachelorette parties. Nice. So each girl at the bachelorette party would give 50 bucks and then she would take them to all the thrift stores and guarantee them that she could help them put together an outfit for less than 10 bucks or something. That's amazing. <laughs> so, Good. So, so there's just <clears throat> all kinds of ways to do this. So if you were doing clothing, mm -hmm. you, you show people how to use them, show yeah. them real cool uh mixes and matches and how you can maximize the, the use of one garment by doing this, that, and the other. I mean, I'm certainly no fashion icon, but that's hey, what me I'm neither. Tell them to do, Everybody you know? sees the, this kind of short <laughs> yeah, every thing. episode <laughs> I do. So, yeah. So, well, okay. So that makes a ton of sense. And, um, and we could, we could go in a whole bunch of, so let's talk about 
uh, maybe some other ways that, you know, these stores have presence. They have, you know, like they're online. I've got mm -hmm. clients with 20, 30, 40, 50,000 name customer mm -hmm. lists. Um, and when we put them in Facebook, they're, they're weighted. So we know we can find, you know, and, and caveat on what I just said. I mean, there, there are other ways of dealing with these lists, working with these lists, but we, we have weighted you know, customer lists on, on Facebook. And some of these people are really high value and other people are lower value, but, you know, we, well, have we they know surveyed the list. Well, most have not. What, yeah. what other interests right. that they could easily provide if they just knew somebody wanted. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. And uh, the, one of the things about surveying people, I learned this from uh, Ryan Levesque, the guy that wrote mm. the book, Ask. Brilliant. Uh, is that <clears throat> you don't give incentives for surveys. Mm -hmm. I used to do that for years, but uh, I found out that was ridiculous because people like me, I would do the same thing. I would throw away email address. And if I get some big bonus, you know, I'll close my eyes and fill out the survey just to get the bonus. Exactly. Yeah, that's the way it is. So they, he said not to give bonuses because you will only get the most ravenous, interested people bothering to fill it out and mm -hmm. you'll get better results. Yes. So I would say the first thing they need to do is survey and see who the heck is on the list and what are their main interests. Yeah. You know, if you have a clothing line, maybe maybe 80% of the women on your list have kids and they make most of the purchase decisions. So so uh, maybe you come up with a kid's line, you know, right? right. like that. Maybe you add toys. Mommy like, dresses are really big. So what if the mother gets a dress and the little girl gets a dress that matches? I would have never guessed that. I, I know no I would either. I don't, have, I don't have kids. I don't that either. It's the thing, you know, so yeah. finding other ways to add additional products. And, you know, I part of the thing that I think people get so married to their idea, you know. Yeah, you have to let the, the, the audience tell you what's Always. working. You yes. can't. Uh, at my level, 28 and a half years online, mm -hmm. millions of dollars of sales. I don't mm -hmm. trust myself. Mm -mm. No. No. <laughs> new, uh, a new product, a new service, uh, still the same bunch of people on my list, but I can't predict, you know, no. if somebody tells you they can put guard your wallet and run because yes. you can't predict, you have to let them tell you. Yeah. And then you listen and then respond. <laughs> right. Whatever. And it's always making decisions based on mm -hmm. the feedback. Yeah. You know, exactly. we can't, I am never the demographic or the psychographic that I'm trying to reach. I don't go out and buy stuff. I'm not a big shopper. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not exactly. buying mommy dresses. So. Exactly. And uh, and now I would like to t talk about something that will help anybody in business. Yes, please. Um, uh, most, most people have families. Most people have family interests. Most people have hobbies. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for 20 some years, I've been teaching them how to make their hobbies tax deductible. Let's and, hear about that. And I am not an accountant or an attorney but I have had hundreds of them in my audiences over many years. Mm -hmm. And I say, Hey, is this valid? Oh yeah. It's just very simple. Yeah. So the idea is, is you, um, let's say you, your family uh, loves camping. All mm -hmm. right. Camping is expensive. Oh, yes. it, no matter what you buy, it's expensive tents, you know, cook stuff, you know, uh, Yeti coolers, all this stuff is expensive. So you don't get any tax, uh, credit for any of that stuff. Mm -mm. You're paying through the nose for it, basically. So what you do is you start a camping website with a WordPress, you know, cheap, you know, 150 bucks maybe to have really nice one. <clears throat> and uh, you don't have to develop a product, but you could find plenty of affiliate stuff selling camping stuff yes. and start bringing money in then that's you're in business. Now you yes. can't bring in $2 and then go buy a hundred thousand dollar camper. The IRS and all the 87,000 new agents with guns are going to come after you. <laughs> right? So, so uh, no, you have to legitimately bring some money in, yeah. but then it makes uh, your, uh, your camping stuff tax deductible. You use your kids as models or, you know, do reviews on camping stuff, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff that you're buying and using anyway. Yes. Now, I happen to have the dubious distinction aim of being the largest person ever to create and star in a tennis training video. Tennis <laughs> training video. Yes. Wow. It's called Fatso Tennis. 
<laughs> you know, I saw that domain <laughs> yeah. in your universe and I thought, okay, that's it's real. Yeah. Can we guess so that? I'm a tennis nut, but guess what? At my, at my tennis club, Rafael Nadal is not there. Roger Federer is not there. Maria Sharapova is not there. It's a bunch of fat butts like me trying to beat the younger guys and run them to death before we drop dead. So, <laughs> so I created a two DVD set of all the tricks of the trade that us oldsters know to frustrate the heck out of the young people and drive them crazy so we have a chance of winning. That's and then, so that's the serious part, the angles of the court, the types of shots, all this stuff. Yeah. But the funny part is, I don't know if you ever remember, there was a movie with Kevin Costner called Tin Cup. Yes. He, yep. Yeah, he was a golfer, but he had kind of lost his mojo. So he he was trying all these gadgets to help him out. <laughs> well, there's crazy gadgets for fat people that play tennis. So so this one, if you have your racket in your hand and the top of the racket's up here, and this is the butt of the racket. Yep. There's a suction cup you can put on there. So you don't have to bend over to pick the ball up. You can just <laughs> put it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so i have all these gadgets on the dvd and stuff that's but, fun but i got uh, you know the the rackets are 200 bucks that you got to have a phd to pick the strings the ball machine was 1800 bucks i got to travel to california to interview a top uh, famous uh, tennis coach and put it on the blog and uh, so uh, all of it legitimately tax deductible because i'm selling this dvd <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. I same love with, it. Same with so, the protection dogs. So yeah. you get so you get the dogs, you get the tennis, mm -hmm. you get basically anything you want to do. You know, you're out in the woods hanging out with the trees. Yeah, yeah. So we're, like you're, we're you're preparing, a we're, we're protecting hunting. I mean, we're uh, uh, we're looking into hunting websites, and uh, I built a hunting trailer. You know, so we got trailer stuff. So there's just all kinds of stuff that you can really enjoy. And they're actually all businesses. Use yourself, mm -hmm. But they're part, well, actually, I don't start a separate business. I just use a doing business as, okay. or I just make it as a, uh, like some of them have separate websites, like Protection Dogs Elite mm -hmm. is for the protection dog. Oh. Uh, the Fatso Tennis is just a product that's happened to be sold through my company, yeah. but on a, with a certain brand, Fatso right. Tennis. Right. So, so you don't have to go crazy with legal fees and everything just to add right. products stuff on that is great <laughs> i love this oh so i think i'm going to start filling my garage up then with woodworking you know tools do you and, like yeah beautiful. yeah make some videos yeah. and make a website that would do it there's one big website i forget it's like ask um ask sarah or something it's a lady that's a really great handy person and she's showing you how to use drills and everything there are a whole bunch you man youtube is just loaded yeah. loaded mm -hmm. That's so cool. Now, if right. you have kids, uh, something happened to me uh, recently where this uh, neighbor lady of mine had this cutest little, cute as a button, little six or seven year old redheaded daughter. She yeah. said, I want to make her a YouTube star because oh. she knew I was into internet. Yeah. And um, you know, I had no no connection with kids much, you know, so so I, um, I'm like kind of blowing her off. Saying, ah, nah, nah. Uh, she said, come on, help me out here. So I said, okay, I'll research a little bit oh my god i couldn't find one of these uh kids toy channels where they're either playing with toys or reviewing toys i couldn't find one video with less than a million views mm -hmm. and i found channels with billion a billion views crazy some of these kids are making uh four or five eight thousand dollars per video their family yeah. had to quit and uh you know so so uh there's just all kinds of things you could do and and you can get sponsors like the one kid colgate you know sponsored his channel and they took the whole family to the colgate place and had him showing all the new little toothbrushes for kids and you know took him on tours and gave him disney ticket i don't know what all they got but you know it was quite a that's amazing you know, yeah that's amazing. well yeah. now okay so that's the direction you said sponsors and that's the direction that i wanted to go today because you know of course when you have a, a podcast or a website or some sort of public exposure you can get a sponsor or a number of sponsors no <laughs> why? oh <laughs> why would you want to well, I don't know. Tell right, me about I'm that. I'm going to tell you why you wouldn't want yeah, to. Yeah, because you're holding up a cross and I'm waiting for the uh, yeah, garlic to come. Yeah, yeah. So, so here's the thing. Yeah. A sponsor 
pays between 12 and $18. If you're like the biggest on earth, that may be $25 okay. per thousand downloads okay. per episode. Okay. Do you know how hard it is to get a thousand downloads per episode? I, yes, I, yeah. I do, do know. Go, it's hard. It could go years and not happen for your yes. podcast. Yes. So that is ridiculous. The, the way to do it is you be the sponsor of your podcast. Yes. I have never had a sponsor, don't want a sponsor. From day one, my podcast was profitable. We just did 640 episodes. Yes. And the, from the first episode, it was profitable because I'm the sponsor. Yeah. So I have products from $17 to $59,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. And all of them have sold during the course of my podcast. Yes. So I could go 50 episodes and not sell anything and do a $59,000 deal. See? So, so be your own sponsor, create your own intellectual property, create your own membership sites, consulting. I, I say, you know, not facetiously, if you have a mouth, you have a product right? yeah. <laughs> because you can coach somebody on something you know how to do. Yes. Somebody else, all your people, somebody else wants to do a Spotify store, yeah. right? So they could learn from you and then pass it on, pay you to learn. And then mm -hmm. do it so they are credible and then teach somebody else. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And Sorry. I've had people do that. I've had yeah. students of mine, students or members or colleagues, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them, and they learned from me, did very well. And then this one young woman has gone on and, you know, she's charging, you know, decent fees now mm -hmm. to teach other people that she has attracted on exactly. how to build a business. And, and she's done very, very well. Yeah. And uh, that's my whole career is based on that is I, uh, my whole career is based on attempting to be excellent at what I do. Yes. And when you are excellent, when you become excellent, people notice, and then they ask you to teach them. Yes. So then you can have double the revenue stream. You mm -hmm. became excellent and made a lot of money. And now others people want to know how to do it. And you can have another revenue stream by teaching. Them. Yes. And I did that over and over again throughout my career. But it all came from my dad teaching me how to be excellent. In fact, you're sitting here talking to my dad. And that's that thing back there. You see that poster behind me? Yes. <clears throat> so my dad came from uh, Syria on a cattle boat as a, a couple of years old in the early 1900s into Ellis Island. In fact, wow. my name is a mistake. You know, he came from Antioch, Syria. And they used to name you in those days from where the village you were born in. Yes. So he gets to Ellis Island and they're like trying to read it. They can't read it. And they say, okay, you're Sam Antioch. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. He's a little kid. He doesn't know. He doesn't so, know. Uh, so uh, do you ever hear of Johnny Cash? Yes. Okay. Well, Johnny Cash wrote a song called A Boy Named Sue. Yes. And it was a song about an old drunk cowboy who figured he wouldn't be around to raise his kids. So he named him Sue. So he'd be scrappy and tough and have to fight it out and be tough. Yes. So my dad was 50 when he had me. Hmm. And so I was a baby of six boys and he figured he wouldn't be around to raise me. So he, and he had only gone to second grade, but he was one of the smartest guys I knew. Yeah. So he, from the time I could crawl represented on this picture, he would put pillows in front of me, put my toys on the other side to teach me how to overcome obstacles. Yeah. And to this day, I'm totally unstoppable. Now, I won't step on anybody or cheat anybody, mm -hmm. but if you tell me I can't do something, this is a good lesson for your people. If mm -hmm. somebody tells you you can't do something, it has nothing to do with you. It means they can't do it, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So so uh, you're basically sitting here talking to him, Every, you know, the excellent stuff, be excellent. Yeah. All this yeah. he, was a, he turned out to be an electrician. He was an entrepreneur, but he was also an electrician. And I remember vividly watching him wire a panel, mm -hmm. uh, nine, 10 years old. And so I'm saying, hey, dad, why don't you just cut the wires across there and save some wire and, you know, get cheaper job? Oh, that was the wrong oh, thing. Oh, no. Him. I remember that vividly. I get goose pimples when I think about it. He's looked at me with daggers in his eyes. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever sacrifice quality and excellence and professionalism for save a few bucks, ever. Mm -hmm. Hey, dad, I, get I got the message. That's great. That and is so, great. So I always add more and more and more to my products and what ha what that does for you amy af after a while is if i just put something out and i don't even write a sales letter mm -hmm. people buy it because yeah. they have i have built a reputation that hey if my name's on it's going to be good 
Yes. And it gets easier if you if you do that. Put the extra effort in the beginning and mm -hmm. it pays off royal in the in, in the end. Absolutely. When I started this podcast and uh, I, your episode will come out in a couple of months because we've got a backlog now, but um, you no, know, I could be dead by then. What's gonna... No, no, no. <laughs> you're not going to be dead. You're still going to be dead. So um, the, uh, one of the things that we did immediately was to, to start with cap closed captions because, you know, different learning styles. And, you know, from my own experience in school, I should have been doing jack jumping jacks in the back <laughs> of the room. So like, you know, the captions and the things moving on the screen and the sound and everything. So that was one of the value adds, you know, that we went for immediately. And I know not everybody does that, but it was important, you know, to me. Yeah, no, we, we happen to be audio only, but my video guy then puts these snippets up with like fake video on it and you yeah. but you can hear it yes. just for extra distribution but this is allowed see i wanted maximum numbers of episodes and exposure mm -hmm. so uh that's how i can i crank that 640 episodes which i have edited myself personally each that's great. we don't have mm -hmm. a back-end person to do it we have a back-end person that loads them up to libsyn which distributes them yeah all over we the place. but but uh, and the only reason I got into it, Amy, is in the podcasting world is because, and I had poo pooed it for years because it was everybody ego centered. Nobody was listening. Uh, they just wanted to hear themselves talk and nobody's making any money. Right. But uh, about four or five, six years ago, the transition occurred when I noticed, <clears throat> pardon me, that new cars could play podcasts from their dashboard. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, hundreds of millions of more potential listeners right there that are stuck and screwing the not they're not yeah. screwing the commutes the right. traffic, wishing they were screwing the commute mm -hmm. and then the other thing that's even bigger amy is the in-home devices yes. like amazon echo and google assistant so you can just say hey play screw the commute podcast and it starts playing in your you yeah. know your house so yeah. i thought oh that's happening and then people were making money like uh I've been on Entrepreneur on Fire. It's one of the top ones in the world. It is, uh, yes. A couple hundred thousand dollars a month they make from that. Mm -hmm. So so that's when I said, okay, it's time to transition. It's no more just an ego trip anymore. Yeah, and that held me back <clears throat> for the longest time because I, there were just so many people and they were just so like, obviously it was about them. And mm -hmm. that is the right. last thing on the planet <laughs> that I'm interested in doing. I don't know, it's not <laughs> about me. So that's why I wanted to always interview interesting people and you know I'll, I'll have every once in a while i'll do a, an episode by myself and i'm like oh yeah it's just so much more interesting to have a well to I, to. I i do uh, probably out of the 640 i've done over 200 solos mm -hmm. i just got so much stuff that i've been through in all the years that you know i can just go all day long with different topics so yes. So I, I, uh, I knock them out. Like I said, I wanted to knock, I've knocked out three a week for four years. You know, so. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, it's certainly a standard to, you know, try to shoot for that. You know, we're still in the double digits. <laughs> I haven't even hit a hundred yet, but we'll get well, that's there. All right. yeah. Now, another thing that I think could help your uh, folks is uh, recruiting young people that mm. are really tech savvy. Mm -hmm. so I have a method, a couple methods to do that if you want to hear about it. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, the first one is we recruit high school students. Mm -hmm. And there's a specific way you have to do it. Uh, and you can't just go down to the high school and say, I want some kids, because at least that's what the policeman told me at the station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, just drive your yeah, white van right yeah, up right, to the front right, door right. wear a clown suit yeah <laughs> have some puppies in there <laughs> so, candy yeah so uh, and and the other thing is is you don't want to go to uh, approach schools in fancy neighborhoods they mm. have more money than you do the kids don't you know yeah don't want to work yep. all right so you go to a blue collar high school you call them up and you ask to speak to the guidance counselor, and you also ask if they have a computer club or who's the teacher for the computer science club. Yes. And you'll get somebody in there, but they know who all the little geeks are. Yes. They know, we call them propeller heads and geeks. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, um, and you want the kid that's never going to get a date in his entire life. Put it that yeah. way. That one. Yep. <laughs> they love their computer, right? Yep. So, so 
we had one, they invited uh, one of my students to come down to the school to talk to the computer club. She had 18 kids, you know, like the Pied Piper following around wanting work. Now yeah. you have to be careful what you say about the work. You have to say weekend, summer, and evening work because you can't compete with the school day, right? Okay. They yes. won't go along with you. Right. But these kids are thrilled to death to be working with computers rather than flipping burgers or, you know, cutting grass. Okay? Yeah. And then the other thing is if they're going to be in your home, you got to make sure there's other people around mm -hmm. younger, younger kids under 18. Yeah. And, uh, but a lot of them don't need to be in your home, but here's the key to that. You do not pay by the hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Because yeah. they'll be on TikTok 99.9% .9 of the hour yeah. and you'll be paying for it. Yes. So I, uh, we pay by the job. So if they're supposed to put three web pages up, if I can go on a, online and look at them, and if they're <laughs> acceptable, then they can get paid. All right. Yeah. So they don't pay by the hour. So that's how you recruit um, uh, high school kids. Now this this next method is you got to have the guts for it. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I write these really mean, rotten employment ads. And the mm -hmm. only place I can put them is Craigslist because yeah. they don't care. All right. You know, monster.com is not going to take this ad that I write. All right? Yes. All right. But there's a critical uh, su subject or headline to the ad. And that is paid internship. Mm -hmm. And here's why. I don't want a 55 year old out of work MBA coming that can't even turn their computer on and say, well, I got an MBA. Well, you're still a moron. You can't turn it. You can't yeah. ever sold a thing online. What am I, you can't operate your computer. What do I need you for? Yeah. And so I don't want to say that to a out of work 55 year old MBA. I, you no. made your bed. So I, so no out of work 55 year old MBA is ever going to apply for an internship. No. <laughs> so, mm. so I don't have to insult them. I don't have to deal with them. I'm only going to get young people, all right, which are tech sap. Yes. And just a sidebar here, uh, you know, I'm, my nickname is the king of ka because my email goes ka yeah. whenever an order comes in. Yes. And so I, I, I thought um, I'd love to have that as my ringtone on my cell phone. Oh, yeah. But I'm thinking to myself, I know myself. It'd take me all day to figure out how to do that. Yeah. I can't waste the whole day on that. So one of the girls in the office comes and gets it, takes it away, comes back, 10 minutes, it goes ka-ching. Nice. Do, do I know how she did it? No. Nope. Do I care? No. Nope. Does it go ka-ching? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So these young people just, boom, just smooth out stuff that you might waste a whole day on yeah. as a non, you didn't grow, I didn't grow up with computers. The first computer I ever saw was a Texas instrument calculator it cost yeah. 80 bucks. And all it would do was multiply, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. That's how mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I do remember the abacus days too, but <laughs> that's different. I had one of those in sixth grade. Yeah. <laughs> Never figured that out. Back in the day. So, so anyway, the headline is paid internship. Mm -hmm. Then inside, I suck them in by saying, you're going to learn from this international, you know, multimillionaire guy. And I, I list all the things they're going to learn. Right? And then after I suck them in, I get to the bottom and it says, but if you're a worthless slug that doesn't care about the quality of your work and show up on time, if he doesn't throw you out of here in five minutes, the good employees that work here will. <laughs> so I scared the heck out of him. So I only got the people that said, you know what, I'll show him. I'm a good quality worker. I care. I'm really smart. I'm going to do. And some of them have been here 13 years. <laughs> wow. That's phenomenal. <laughs> no, that's great. I weeded out all the worthless slugs that are out there and there's, they're getting worse nowadays. They can't even read. No. I mean, did you see the state? I don't know where you, where are you located? Uh, Florida. Same okay. In Florida. All right, most yeah, they can read in Florida, but Oregon they can't. And right. the governor came out and said, "You don't have to pass a math or reading test to get your high school diploma." <laughs> All right, that's the governor. My next book is titled "Highly Educated Idiots." Yeah, people that go along with these kind of things. And then it's Baltimore crazy. came out. They did a they did a survey of six hundred high school students. Mm -hmm. Twelve of six hundred could read at their own level. 
hundreds of them were kindergarten level reading. Kindergarten level. Kindergarten level. Yeah. Wow. We're turning out the next generation of human losers. I mean, yeah. and it's and I don't blame that the kids. I blame these highly educated it's, idiots. Right. That are exactly. Doing all this other stuff. So, yeah. so you have to kind of play to that nowadays, and uh, that's why emojis are good and and uh, hieroglyphics. Yeah. You yeah. Be so, com yeah. Co communicating <laughs> right. with hieroglyphics. That's it. Finger painting. And there's no apostrophe in, <laughs> yeah. involved at all. <laughs> yeah. So you have to kind of play to that nowadays. You have to have plenty of white space on your website. You have to use graphics and pictures, open it up. Also, because people get eye strain and headaches from reading. So you got to open up uh, the spaciousness of your website uh, mm. and things. But you, uh, you, you just have to play to, you know, the people are getting dumber. It's, you know, it's, uh, yeah, sad school, and true. I have a school and uh, we found out that a uh, study by uh, greatpointaverage.org or, or .com, I forget which it is, that this, the colleges and universities are artificially inflating grade point averages to justify their super raises in tuitions. Wow. But the testing is showing that the kids are dumber when they get out. Wow. So th I have a thing, uh, it's a the college ripoff quiz, you know, because oh. there's just so many people are in debt they're getting out with these mbas and working competing for jobs at starbucks yep yep and i a number of people have joined my program who have a master's degree or an mba and with the focus on marketing digital marketing <laughs> and they come in and they say what you're teaching is sorcery i've never seen this <laughs> sorcery. Like, yeah, wow you know like yeah. useless what did you just do with the last eight yeah. years of your life our school uh, we update our curriculum maximum of weekly mm -hmm. the stuff that you go to a, a class at university. Yeah. You're lucky if it's yearly and right. the instructor never made a nickel online themselves anyway. You know, yeah. so God help you if you go to one of those and you run up a big amount of student debt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, we could go off on yeah. <laughs> yeah. quite some time, yeah. but I like how you're able to hire high school kids in that paid internship, or even we've got a couple of universities around here and, um, you know, with programming, you know, like real coders and they want a portfolio. I mean, that, that could be a useful yeah, no, no, we, we, I've never used any coding ever. We always okay. use off the, off the shelf software nice. uh, because I, I, you know, somebody introduced me yesterday. I was on a show and they said, yeah, Tom is cutting edge. I said, wait a minute, uh -uh. <laughs> you got the wrong guy. I I use what I call dull edge technology. Okay, all because right. Because the cutting or the call bleeding edge is mm -hmm. the most expensive, most glitches, most customer hassles and yeah. you know things. So I wait till the geeks figure it all out, get all the bugs out. We don't yes. update our WordPress until after, after uh, weeks after the first update because yes. it's full bugs. Yes. And when they fix them, then mm -hmm. we update. So we're always behind it a little bit, but I don't have customer hassles. I don't have websites down. That's I don't great. have bugs. I don't have to try, try to talk to programmers because when when a, a business person tries to talk directly to a programmer without a program manager. Oh, yeah. It's, no. like, it's like two different languages. You yes. know, the, the business person says, well, yeah, I think I want you to make this button go here. And the programmer is like, that's 10,000 more lines of code. And you know, then they're just, yeah. So, no, yeah. we use all off the shelf after the bugs are out. Good. That's a way to make the most money with the least hassle. <laughs> so really you're focusing just on high school level interns. No, no. The, yeah. uh, the Craigslist people are usually older. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Just not the MBAs who. No, I don't want that. Okay. No, yeah. no, because they're, they can't even, they're worse than me on the computer. <laughs> generally true all right cool so all right well we we've been here almost 45 minutes i could talk with you all day long i'm just getting um, warmed up yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but you know what i'm going to keep this short and okay. have you back because i'll definitely invite you back if you are open to it and um you know so how can people get a hold of you tom if they well, want i want to i want to give them a, a gift that will really help them if they bother to t use it thank and you it's called how to automate your business Great. And just one of the tips in this amy one tip all right that i've been using since 1997 and a, and a young geek 
gave me the tip. One of these programs, well, just one of the things in the book has saved me almost 8 million keystrokes. Wow. See, I want people working with customers and prospects and creating products and services, not fighting with their computer. Yes. So this is how to automate your business, all the ways that I became lightning fast without being a techie or geek. Yes. So they can download that at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. Screwthecommute.com slash automate free. While they're at it, they can grab, we have a podcast app also, screwthecommute.com slash app, A-P-P. They can grab that and put us on their cell phones and stuff. So, um, and then uh, check out Screw the Commute podcast, which I'm sure you're going to be on here one of these days, right? It'd be great. I'd love uh, it. You're going to turn me down? No. i get you on, on video right here. Yeah. And so we're, we're recording. I'll yeah, show up okay. where you want me to show up, Tom. Uh, okay. I've learned so much just talking to you for the last 45 minutes. It's great. <laughs> And yeah. and looking at your assets online, your your uh, website, podcast, everything is a rich, rich resource. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, like the only uh, licensed, dedicated internet marketing school in the country. We have the Great Internet Marketing Retreat Center, where I'm recording from, which is a big mansion where people actually live in the house uh, with me for immersion weekends. Wow. And we have uh, a TV studio here where we shoot their videos for them. You know, so it's a very comprehensive program. It's the longest running. Uh, ever internet and digital marketing mentor program you know brilliant so, mm -hmm. truly brilliant awesome all right well i this is not the last <laughs> of our connection thank you so much tom this My is pleasure phenomenal and Get some um, digital products out there folks come on absolutely that's that's where the money is and that's where that's where the the solid foundation needs to be you know, well, um, you can start with less risk uh, because you're pro and less knowledge because your profit margins are high. Exactly. Perfect. All right. That's the mic drop moment. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. All right. See you later. You've been listening to the Traffic Handler podcast. We're about getting new customers, making more sales, and growing your e commerce retail business. I'm your host, Amy Biddle. Get more at amybiddle.me. And until next time, go sell more stuff.